Good day everyone, I am Ruvian Alfaro, your MC for this chapter's webinar. Before we start this webinar, let us first bow our heads to feel the presence of the Lord, in which will be leaded by Miss Jean Leslie Medinilia. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help as we gather together. We pray for guidance to the matters at hand and ask that you would really show us how to conduct our work with the spirit of joy. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach the higher and farther to be the best we can be. Oh, yeah, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Miss Jean Menadilia. May I now check if everyone's here by raising your hand as I call your name. Let us first call Mr. Aaron Vergara. How about Mr. Armel Impas? Next is Mr. Christopher Camacho, Ms. Giselle Villon. How about Ms. Ines Benavente? Followed by Mr. Gabon Estor. Next is Ms. Janet Abreu. Are you here, Ms. Jean Leslie Medanilla? How about Mr. Jobet Quarteros? Next is Mr. Kervin Rogado. How about Mr. Leonard Maranga? Rogelio Salido Jr.? So, of course, everyone's here. Let us now move on to the major purpose of this webinar. Chapter 2 is all about crafting the curriculum. A curriculum as a planned sequence of learning experiences should be at the heart and mind of every teacher. Every teacher as a curricularist should involve in designing a curriculum. In fact, it is one of the teacher's role as a curricularist. This module will provide the necessary concepts and activities that you, as a teacher, can refer to as you prepare yourself to be a curriculum designer. May I now present you the speaker for the lesson one, Fundamental of Curriculum Designing, Ms. Janet Abreu and Mr. Leonard Maranga. Today, I will be discussing to you the lesson one, Fundamentals of Curriculum Design. Designing a curriculum is a very challenging task. It is here where the style and creativity of the teacher come in. As a curriculum designer, this task was not given much attention in the past. Every single day, a teacher designs a lesson or utilizes a curriculum that has been made and was previously written. So, in this lesson, I will be discussing the contents, which is firstly, Peter's Oliva's 10 Actions for Curriculum Designers. The second one is Elements or Components of Curriculum. And the third one is Applications of the Fundamental Components to the Other Curriculum Design. So let us first go to, number one, Building on Peter Oliva's 10 Actions for Curriculum Designers. So uh, before we go to this topic, uh, let, let me introduce to you our desired outcomes, which is kailangan na ito yung ma-achieve natin at the end of the lesson. First, we must identify the fundamentals of the curriculum designing. And the second one, we must appreciate the task of designing a curriculum. So, let us go to the content of this 
topic. So, building on Peter's only best and actions for curriculum designers, before a teacher design a curriculum, it would be great importance to connect to the fundamental concepts and ideas about the curriculum mentioned in Module 1 and Module 2. So, we must have a background from the Module 1 and Module 2. Every curriculum designer, implementer, or evaluator should take in mind the following general actions as a guide in curriculum development. So, kailangan uh, maunawaan natin at maalala lahat ng, ng actions na ito ni Peter Oliva. So, the first one is, curriculum change is inevitable, necessary, and desirable. Um, uh, ang pinupunto dito is inevitability of change. So, societal development and knowledge revolution come so fast that the need to address the changing condition requires new curriculum design. So, all, we all know naman na uh, throughout time, nag, nagbabago yung ating curriculum in proportion to our society. And kailangan na mag-respond yung curriculum doon sa nangyayaring changes sa ating uh, environment. So, for it is true change that life forms grow and develop. Like, halimbawa, human institutions, like human being themselves, katulad natin, nag-grow yun at nag-develop in proportion to their ability to respond to, cha to change and to adapt to, to changing conditions. So, therefore, we need, we must to adapt and change na nararapat para doon sa ating environment. Tulad din ng society, obviously, society constantly encounters problems to which they must respond or perish. Therefore, kapag hindi tayo nag-respond doon sa change na nangyayari, maaring uh, makasama doon sa society and at the same time doon sa people. Change in the form of responses to contemporary problems must be foremost in the mind of every educator. Yun kailangan yun nasa mind ng educator. Kailangan uh, tayo nag-observe dun sa ating paligid sa society kung ano yung nade-develop, kung ano yung nag-change in order para makarespan tayo at makaadap tayo kung ano yung kailangan baguhin. It is more on outcome-based. Learning is designed on the upper levels of updated na kung saan tumiting tayo dun sa kay Bloom's taxonomy. So, here we have a diagram in Bloom's taxonomy. So, yung, yung pinapoint dito sa action 1 ay nagpo-focus tayo dun sa upper part ng kay Bloom's taxonomy. So, curriculum and instruction addresses students' diversity. Tulad ngayon, uh, ang mga millennials, more on sila ay... Uh, modernize na yung ating panahon ngayon. Marami nang nagbago. Uh, more on tayo ay outcome-based, learn learner-centered, and teacher as a facilitator or coach, which is yung curriculum is connected to the student's interest, experiences, talents, in the real world, or so community engagement. Self, peer, and other assessment, dun tayo nagpo-focus ngayon. And ang pinakang main goal ay to learn skills and strategies na maiso, makasolve ng problems and ma-apply natin sa ating society. So, doon mo, more on tayo nagpo-focus. Tulad nga dito sa diagram ni, ni Bloom's Taxonomy, nakikita natin dito yung mas more on ini-emphasize yung apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So, as I said before, nagpo-focus dito sa number one yung point na uh, yung curriculum ay mas umiikot doon sa upper part uh, na, na level nung, kay, nung sa Bloom's Taxonomy which is in applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating in order para uh, maka-adapt sa society and ma maka maka-respond dun sa pangailangan ng society. Then, tulad nga dito sa isang picture dito doon sa isa isa to sa changes na nangyayari sa atin ngayon and familiar tayo at uh, tungkol dito sa ano sabi nung bata hindi niya maintindihan yung math society or history then sabi nung mother sabi niya 
dati na, na napapag-aralan mo siya. Pero uh, bakit ngayon hindi na? So sabi nung sabi nung bata, last year kasi daw wala pang mas yung mga teachers, but ngayon meron na. So hindi niya nauunawaan masyado. So in a broader uh, outlook, um parang pinupunta dito na tulad sa atin ngayon, sa ating nangyayari, social issue na kung saan malaki yung pagbabago lalo na sa education na nag-focus tayo in modular and online learning. So, in order para maka-adapt tayo dun sa nangyayari and maka-respond tayo, ano makapagpatuloy sa pag-aaral ay nag, na inintroduce sa atin yung online learning. Or medyo familiar tayo dati pero mas ngayon na-enhance na through modular and online learning ngayon kasi ah uh, Nandito na ang nakapaloob yung computer literacy. So, one of the things na ito yung response sa atin ng, na, ng, ng, ng tao dun sa society. So, therefore, there is a need to embrace changes in the curriculum in order to respond to contemporary problems. Kasi nga sabi dun sa una, yung curriculum is inevitable. Obviously, yun na nag-change talaga dynamic and necessary and desirable. Let us move on to number two. Nakuha niyo yung number one. Okay. Opo, ma'am. Let us go to number two. Curriculum is a product of the time. So, other term, timeless. A relevant curriculum should, be, should respond to changes brought about by current social forces, philosophical positions, psychological principles, new knowledge, and educational reforms. The school curriculum not only reflects, but also a product of its time. Why? For example, ang IT is a corollary to the first, which is ang pinupunta ay, yung IT daw yung isa sa proposition na kung saan proven na, na one of the things na product ng pagbabago ng ating society or ng ating mundo, which is ngayon modernized na. So, more on uh, exposure tayo sa media uh, sa, or social media in short, which is, or sa mga technology. So, yeah. Before the advent of television, computer works and other media curriculum was relatively, relatively slow. Nung mga panahon na dati, slow pa yung uh, paggamit ng computer. But ngayon, instant na. One of the, one of the, things na to na ginagamit natin at gamit na gamit in order para tayo maka-adapt din sa at makamove on tayo sa ating mga pag-aaral. Ganun. So, ito, ito pati yung uh, nire-recommend na, na kailangan mostly ay meron na halos lahat ng mga sudyante, especially cellphone. So, it, maraming pagbabago na nangyari sa curriculum over a period of time. Na na doon ay team teaching, instructional television, Iba-iba na yung way ng pagtuturo, yung way gamit ng pagtuturo. Open space education, values clarification, behavioral objectives, more on tayo learning outcome. Computer literacy, I said before, uh, bihira na ngayon yung mga sudyante na hindi mo mag-computer or gumamit ng cellphone. And lastly, cooperative learning. Obviously, kung dati noon, mas more on tayo exposed sa featured centered teacher centered but more on ngayon in 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 emphasize na yung learner centered ah uh, halimbawa dito sa pictures na ipapresent ko dito sa pictures so one of the things na nangyayari ngayon online learning na yan so hindi lang basta sa teacher nagfo-focus more on sa parents na din parents na din yung tumutulong kasi na sa bahay more on home Home, home learning, ganun. So, yung, yung, yung parents as one of the um, instructor na din para makakontinue sa pag-aaral yung kanilang mga anak o yung mga students. So, a persuasive educational groups and individual has been responsible for the adoption of curricular innovations in the history. And it caused permanent and continuing change in the curriculum. So, from the from period of time, nagbabago na nagbabago. At yun naging product sa pamagitan ng pagbabago, nagkakaroon ng panibagong curriculum. 
Curriculum change depends on people who will implement the change. Course, concurrent changes. Curriculum changes made at an earlier period of time can exist concurrently with new work curriculum changes at a later period of time. So, maaaring yung mga uh, dating na na-develop na curriculum, pwede rin siya mag-exist at the same time sa mga na yung new work na na-develop na curriculum. A revision in a curriculum starts and ends slowly. More often, curriculum is gladly phased in and phased out. So, may nag-phase and may phase out. Maring iba ay hindi na effective, maring iba ay medyo effective pa. And yung mga new work ngayon na na curriculum, yun yung ginagamit as in ngayon. Na kung saan, without the, without the past curriculum, wala tayo ngayong develop na curriculum. Thus, the changes that occur can coexist and oftentimes overlap for long periods of time. Because of this, curriculum and management change is very tasking and challenging, of course. In competing, changes have almost mandated an eclecticism, especially in public school. Um, people behind the curriculum select the best response to the emerging changes in the society. Of course, um, magde-design tayo ng isang curriculum na pinakangi siya yung magandang ma makakapag-response dun sa changes na nangyayari sa ating society. For example, yung changes na nangyayari sa education sa ating bansa, K-12 curriculum. So, when the status quo no longer needs of their learners, we should replace it. Siyempre, kung hindi na siya effective, we must replace it to promote appropriate responses para maka, maka mamit natin yung needs no no sa education the reemerge of the prior responses will be new responses not an old in the sense of being unchanging or unchangeable so there are times na alimbawa ay nandiyan pa rin yung dati na curriculum uh, nag na exist pa din ng konti kasi together with the new work curriculum Kumbaga, without kasi doon sa old curriculum, hindi tayo makapag-develop ng panibago. In a sense na hindi siya, alimbawa, na nandun pa rin, or on, not an old in the sense of being unchanging and unchangeable. Curriculum, curriculum changes made earlier can exist concurrently with newer curriculum changes. As I said before, it is more major related siya doon, concurrent changes. Curriculum change results from change in people, sa people naman to. So, one of the main na ano dito ay yung mga take, stakeholders should be involved. Kailangan involved sila and committed dun sa changes na nangyayari. At syempre, uh, malaki kasi yung kanilang uh, ambag dun sa curriculum na mababago. There is a need to change the people who must ultimately affect the curriculum. To change the curriculum of the school is to change the factors interacting to shape the curriculum. Of course, in each instance, this means bringing changes in people, their desires, for example, beliefs, attitudes, and in their knowledge and skills. Sabi nga, sabi yun ni Mill, no, 1998. So, sabi niya na, kap, sa pagbabago daw ng curriculum sa school, ay is to change the factors interacting to shape the curriculum. Halimbawa, uh, nakapalog kasi doon yung mga desires, beliefs, attitudes, kailangan siya i-consider, lalo na yung knowledge and skills, para uh, maging matiba yung curriculum na madedevelop. The lack of enthusiasm usually affected the performance of the students. Siyempre, kung hindi matiba yung foundation ng isang curriculum na i-develop, hindi siya magiging effective. Especially kung, alimbawa, hindi siya include na na-develop. Walang, alimbawa, walang, walang, hindi, hindi involved yung iba. Kaya nga sabi ko, mahalaga na involve yung mga stakeholders kasi mahalaga siyang support. Sadly, subordinate don't work very well on the, on the rules. So, there were times na hindi nagkakasundo. May mga times na hindi approved dun sa iba. So, yun yung nagiging problema. Kaya nga sabi ko, mahalaga na nagkakaintindi yung lahat or involve yung lahat, the people. Unless the subordinates embrace this change and goals as theirs, 
then change ke will become meaningful and long lasting. So magiging matiba yung isang curriculum na madedevelop kung uh, mag-embrace yung bawat isa dun sa change na gagawin. And what we should not forget, every spill out to the student. So magre-reflect magre-reflect siya dun sa mga student. So kailangan mahalaga rin yun. Na kailangan natin i-consider. Next, number five. Curriculum development is a cooperative group activity. So, related din siya dun sa past na action na nasabi ko. Cooperative and divorce. Why we need cooperative? Dahil curriculum change is affected as a result of a cooperative and divorce in the part of the groups. So, nandiyan na kailangan talaga yung cooperation. Not in a term na ma-involve lang ng ano na yung pangalan lang or ganun which uh, ang ibig sabihin ay yung efforts din kailangan kasama dun significant oh, changes in the curriculum should be brought out as a result of a group decision of course kaya nga nasabing cooperative nandiyan nakasama yung group decision in any change in the curriculum should involve all the stakeholders well, yan na sabi ko kanina the teachers students administrators and even non-certified personnel so, kailangan involve sila. So, walang may iwan. Teachers and specialists, halimbawa, are involved in the professional core. The teacher works together under the direction of the school administrators as the overseer. So, related din. The administrator will take the bow who successes and will take the vibes for the efforts done already. So, may pananagutan. Yung bawat isa, halimbawa, kung hindi maging success yung curriculum or maging success man, sila yung makikinabang ulit. Kaya sila yung katanggap nung uh, uh, consequences ng nangyari. So, kaya nga, mahalaga na uh, involved yung bawat isa. In any change, without the understanding and support of at least core majority of educators will fail. So, yun. Not because of the changes themselves, but the way these changes came about. So, kung alimbawa, na-implement yung curriculum, mahalaga na Ma, yung outcome ay maging maganda kasi kung hindi, ang mas nakakabahala ay kung ano yung magiging resulta ng changes gamit yung curriculum na yun. Okay? Next, number six. Curriculum development is a decision-making process made from choices of alternatives. So, as I said before, group decision ito kasama yung... Uh, uh, other stakeholders and then administrators. And ito naman ay decision-making process. Diba nga sabi ko, involved yung bawat isa at involved din doon yung pag-decision-making. Kung ano ba yung kanilang dapat gawin, kung ano yung mga kailangan nilang i-consider. It is a decision-making process. Curriculum development is basically a decision-making process. Of course. Choices among discipline, choices among competing views, Alin ba dapat? Choices among four emphasizes. Emphasis. Excuse me. Emphasis. Choices of methods. Ano ba yung kailangan yung piliin methods? Choices of organization. So, it, it's like a political process. The administrator should have a political will as a teacher. So, uh, maraming choices na kailangan silang uh, pag-isipan o kung, alin, kung alin yung kailangan nilang i-consider in a group. Kaya mahalaga yung cooperation. At the same time, kailangan precise kung ano talaga yung um, decision na kailangan nilang gawin. O yan. Doon sa picture pa lang. Ayan. Nakalagay doon kung paano yung tamang pag, de, pag decision making process. Okay, next. Number seven. Curriculum development is an ongoing process. So ito, pansin nyo, related, related siya sa bawat isa. Um, mula dun sa decision-making process, punta tayo sa ongoing process. Of course, every decision na na inagawa ay nandun yung consequence at the same time, hindi siya doon nag, nag i stick lang. Hindi siya doon na nag i stay lang. Uh, yung ating curriculum, yung development niya is ongoing. Kasi hindi pa natin makikita yung, yung effectiveness niya ng lubusan without seeing is at uh, as a process, hindi siya kaagad makikita natin ng madalian kasi proseso siya eh. We all know it's a process. 
and it takes time. Continuous process na. Yan. Curriculum changes is never ending process. Kasi throughout time, nagbabago, paba, nagbabago yung ating society, marami tayong kailangan i-consider na pagbabago, na kung saan, hindi, hindi sapat na mag-stay tayo sa isang curriculum lang. There were times na talaga mag-develop, mag-develop yung curriculum. The stakeholders should always have a room for improvement. Of course, hindi tayo dapat sapat na mag... mag kasi nga, designing yung pinag-uusapan natin dito eh. Designing. Kailangan open yung ating mind uh, for improvement. Hindi tayo dapat mag-stick lang sa kung ano yung nandyan. Kasi hindi siya, nag, hindi siya mag-search for uh, uh, more on improving. Kasi pa-improve din ang pa-improve yung ating environment or yung technology natin. So, kailangan mag-adapt din tayo through changes. Sabi ko nga doon na kanina. Remember, when dealing with work, nothing is taken personally against you. So, syempre, yun yung part na changes natin, tinutukoy natin ay uh, for the society. Not, not in a personally. So, yung mga tanong dito ay Paano ba natin, how do we see feedback? How do we fight or flight? So, the returns kasi na itong curriculum development ay um, it takes uh, trial and error. Ganun. Stakeholders should always have a room for improvement as I said before as a needs of the learners change. Kasi kailangan ma-meet natin yung kailangan, or yung pagbabago doon sa mga learners, as a society unfolds, as a new knowledge appears, of course, hanggang ngayon, yung mga knowledge ay pa-improve ng pa-improve, there should be change. Changes does not end in temporary modification and newer implementation. There should be continuous monitoring to assure that the program is on track and the problem does not reoccur. Sabi ko nga kanina, yung curriculum development siya ay in response to the changes in the society. At bukod pa doon, may, may mga times kasi na yung changes na nangyayari ay social issues. Na kung saan kailangan tayo mag-respond as a edu future educator para yung mga problems na yun, kung nag-exist man noon, ay hindi na, pa, hindi na mabago ngayon at mag-improve pa. So yun, yung point doon. And let us go to number eight. Curriculum development is more effective if it is comprehensive process rather than piecemeal. So what do we mean by that? This is a picture, the bigger picture. Let us look at the bigger picture. So it is a comprehensive process. Curriculum change is a comprehensive process. It is not a void hit or me, something like that. There is an importance at looking at the whole picture, not just um, at a specific looking, limbawa sa atin, sa curriculum development, but more on, ano yung pinakang uh, overall objective. Halimbawa ay, halimbawa, this is a statement ng, look at the picture, eh, look at the whole forest and not only on the trees. The, ano ba yung, let, hindi tayo titingin lang doon sa mga more on specific, kundi sa whole uh, objectives nung curriculum. Maganda rin na kailangan tingnan natin yun. What does the macro curriculum is showing? Ano ba yung uh, pinapakita doon? So, sa atin ngayon, sa curriculum natin, more on tayo um, ay learn, uh, learner-centered, for example. A good is investment is needed in order to create a comprehensive change. Needed. So, makakatulong yung pagtingin natin in a whole picture doon sa pag-align pag natin or keeping in track on the objectives ng curriculum. So, yun. Then, number nine. Curriculum development is more effective when it follows a systematic process. Of course, mahalaga yun. Systematic development. A systematic curriculum development is more effective than trial and error. Okay. So, dito mas... Uh, Titingnan natin yung mas uh, bigger picture here. Um, pag sinabing systematic curriculum, there is a process. Not just yung, alimbawa, titingnan natin na ako, mag-agintang, mag-agintang, ano, parang trial and error nga. 
So, hindi, hindi dapat tayo din mag-stick, kundi kung, kung ano yung proseso doon sa process ng uh, curriculum. The set procedures should be made systematically by following an established set of procedures. So, may mga procedures yun. Compose yun ng desired outcomes, subject matter content, if complemented with references, of course, set of procedures, needed materials and resources, and evaluation procedures that can be placed in matrix. So yung, halimbawa dyan sa picture na yan, yan, it is a process in curriculum development. Mahalaga na systematic siya. So yun. Then, lastly, number 10, curriculum development starts from where the curriculum is. Of course, the, tulad nga related siya sa mga nasabi ko kanina pa na hindi kayo makaka-form ng panibagong curriculum without looking at the curriculum na nag-e-exist. Kasi, um, starting from existing curriculum, sorry, curriculum yun. So, starting from, for example, yung, kung halimbawa, way back nung mga elementary days pa natin, nung hindi pa nag-e-exist yung K-12. Kung halimbawa, imagine natin na nandun tayo sa panahon na yun yun. Um, without looking or starting on the, in that curriculum, hindi tayo makaka-improve or makaka-set, makakahanap ng improvement para ma-develop yung panibago ko yung curriculum, which is K-12 curriculum. Yeah. So, yun. The curriculum planner starts from where the curriculum is. Just as the teacher starts where the students are. So, dun tayo mag start And the following that, dyan naman sisimula yung curriculum development as I said before, ongoing siya. And at the same time, involved doon yung hindi laang basta sa teacher, kundi marami siyang involved na tao. And in the form of group, in together with cooperation. So yun. When we embrace the change, then only then success will take, take place. One thing will remain, the same is change. Tulad ngayon, hindi natin masasabi na uh, uh, forever na itong trade to 12 na to. There were times na, alimbawa, nagbago yung, uh, may pagbabago sa ating environment, pag adapt kung ano yung pangailangan ng mga learners and ng society and yung yung curriculum, yung magre-respond. Maaring, um, unti-unti ngayon, may panibagong na de-develop or halimbawa ay nag-iisip ng design na panibagong curriculum na kung saan, based from what what our curriculum now is. So, yun. An existing design is a good starting point. An existing design is a good starting point for any teacher who plans to enhance and enrich a curriculum. So, that's all for the 10 actions of people. Thank you. Now, let us proceed to the major components or elements of curriculum design. As we continue, it is very important to know as a curriculum designer, uh, we had four elements of curriculum design. Number one, intended learning outcomes. It focuses more on questions, what learning outcomes need to be achieved? Number two, subject matter. What content should be included to achieve the learning outcomes? Number three, teaching learning methods. Answer the questions. What learning experiences and resources should be employed? And number four, assessment of achieved learning outcomes. Nakapokus sa questions that how will the achieved learning outcomes be measured? Now, let us proceed to the learning uh, next question. This is the guide. This is the guide. Teaching uh, teaching guide includes five. We have the behavioral objectives or the intended learning outcomes, like what I said. Number two is the content subject matter. Number three, references. Number four, teaching and learning methods. And number five, assessment evaluation. Let us discuss first the behavioral objectives or intended learning outcomes. The objectives or intended learning outcomes are reasons for undertaking the learning outcomes that is to be accomplished. 
The revised Bloom's taxonomy of objectives by Anderson and Catworm on 2003 stated that the statement should be smart. A behavioral objective's ceiling outcomes stated is measurable terms, which gives directions to the learner's experience and becomes the basis for students' evaluation. Cognitive objectives emphasize intellectual outcomes such as knowledge, understanding, and thinking skills. As I said earlier, they, they revised the Bloom's taxonomy, which he stated is smart. Let us give the emphasis for this word smart. Letter S, specific. A specific goal is, is distinct and defines as much as the goals and pas possible and contains a big language. Di ba pag sinabing specific, so hindi siya broad, hindi siya malawakan, kundi nandun siya sa tanong na what, where, how, kung paano natin yung sasabi na it is direct, direct to the point, hindi yung broad na malawak na wala namang uh, medyo na, mas, kumbaga, mas komplikado, mas nagiging komplikado na po. Number two is M, it is measurable. Di ba pag, uh, of course, it is measurable kasi dapat na mamemeasure natin yung mga bagay na kailangan natin ituro. Hindi siya yung basta, kumbaga, may time-bounded o limit na sinasabi. Number three is attainable. Siyempre, kailangan mabot nung, nung expectation nung, nung guro, yung kanyang nice doon ituro sa kanyang mga estudyante. Halimbawa, kapag siya ay nagtuturo, kailangan yung, yung mga tinuturo niya doon sa kanyang estudyante, mas madali nilang naabot. Kumbaga, mas nagiging sensitive yung teacher na kung saan ay mas may bibigay niya sa maayos na paraan yung kanyang pagtuturo doon sa kanyang mga estudyante. Number two is relevant. Of course, it's very important. Kasi kung halimbawa, hindi naman relevant yung tinuturo ng teacher sa kanyang estudyante, siguro, mahihirapan yung estudyante na, ma, na, na ma-meet yung expectation ng teacher o malaman kung ano ba yung sinasabi ng uh, mga guide questions ng teachers. Number three is yung, ay, na, last thing is the time-based. Siyempre, friend, kapag ikaw ay gagawa ng objective, siguro, nagsama na doon, mahalaga na Nandun yung time-bounded na sinasabi. Kasi kung walang time base, hindi natin malalaman kung kailan matatapos. Malilit yung estudyante kung hanggang, kung hanggang kailan yung deadline o kanilang ginagawa. Dapat bilang isang uh, educator, uh, mahalaga na dapat yung, yung ginagawa nating objectives kasama dun yung time-bounded na sinasabi, time-based. Ano po? And now, number two is the content subject matter. Additional principles about the content. Subject matter should be relevant to the outcomes of the curriculum. Siyempre, kailangan talaga relevant dun sa outcomes sinasabi. Kasi kung hindi siya relevant, mas mahirap ang ma-develop yung thinking skills ng mga estudyante. Subject matter should be appropriate to lesson or unit. Siyempre, kailangan appropriate din siya. Subject matter should be up to date. Siyempre, mahalaga na meron talaga tayong naset na oras para mas... Uh, maging compatible at magkaroon talaga ng ng uh, sinasabi natin na maayos na usapan yung teacher tsaka yung kanyang estudyante. Subject matter on the other hand is more finely described <laughs> as actual knowledge and learning <laughs> Example of subject matter is paper written about dogs. This is example na binigay niya. The matter or thought presented for the consideration is some statement or discussions that Dapat which is made the object of thought or study. Yun nga yung sinasabi. Number three is yung reference. Follow the contents. It tells where the contents or subject matter has been taken. Ito yung mga no reference na nakita na binigay sa module na sinasabi na number one is yung kay Project Wild 1992 kay 12 Activity Guide. Yung reference na ito, yung mga base na kung saan ay pwedeng makatulong doon sa teachers as a curriculum designer na doon sa mga naon na pa lang. The reference follows the content. It tells where the content or subjects matter has been taken. The reference may be a book, a module, a any publications. It must be the author of the materials and it's possible and publication. Next. 
Number four is the teaching and learning methods. These are the activities where the learners derive experiences should allow. We have three cooperations. Individualism or independent learning. Number three is the competition. Cooperative learning is a learning structure that emphasizes positive interdependence between students, small groups, or students work together towards a common goal that often includes a mastery of specific content or skills. Collaborative learning is often used inter interchangeable with cooperative learning. So, siguro, di ba, kapag tayo ay nag-aaral, Siyempre, mahalaga na meron tayong cooperative learning. Kasi, halimbawa, sa mga activities, sa mga ginagawa natin ng doon na nabubuo yung brainstorming. Kasi, mahirap naman na, mahirap naman na solo lang tayo, di ba? Kailangan, nandun pa rin yung cooperative, cooperative natin na as a group participants, ano? Meron din yung competitive learning. A learning structures that emphasize negative interdependence between student, individual students, or small groups of students strive out performs other to achieve some goal. Di ba, meron din naman na, solo lang. Meron, ay, meron din mga competitive na, ang alam nila, sarili na, mas favor sa kanila, yung mas solo lang sila, yung mas interdependence lang sila, ayaw nila nung mas, parang mas nahihirapan sila, kumbaga, mas nagpo-focus sila sa kung ano lang yung gusto nilang gawin. Ito din, individualistic learning. The learning is structures that lacks any types of interdependence. All students work independently to achieve goals. The outcomes of each student have no influence to the outcomes of other students. Ano ba, wadi ba? May tulad niya nun. May mga estudyante talaga na gusto nila, magtrabaho lang sila independently. Kung baga na-achieve nila yung goals nila sa so, pamagitan ng sarili lang nila na uma kaya nila na nagtitiwala sila sa kanilang sarili na magawa nila yung mga bagay na gusto nila na hindi humihingi ng tulong sa iba. May sarili silang uh, ginagawa. Ano? Kumbaga, yung learning nila nakadepende sa kung saan sila mas nagiging maayos. These are activities where the learners drive experience. It's always good to keep in mind the teaching strategies that students will experience. Lectures, laboratory, classes, fieldwork. Siyempre, di ba? Ganun. Assessment number five. Assessment and evaluation. The process by which this information is generated is assessment. Three main forms of assessment. We have self-assessment, peer assessment, teacher assessment. Peer assessment in which the students provide feedback on each other's learning. Self-assessment through which students learn to monitor and evaluate their own learning. Teacher's assessment in which the teachers prepare and administer tests and gives feedback on the student's performance. Let's discuss the self-assessment. Self-assessment is the process of looking at oneself in order to assess aspects that are important to one's identity. Siyempre, di ba, minsan kapag gumagawa tayo, katulad lang din nung kanina, parang self-assessment, na kung saan ay tinuturuan natin yung ating sarili na individual, ina-assess natin yung sarili natin, hindi lang tayo lagi nagpo-focus sa tulong ng iba, kundi natututo rin tayong gumawa ng sarili natin na ina-assess natin yung sarili natin sa pumagitan lang natin. Meron naman ng peer assessment kasi may mga, ano ba, o sa kaibigan o sa mga kagrupo natin. Nandun na kailangan natin ng assessment nila kasi minsan, yung assessment na ginagawa natin, nakakatulong. Yung ginagawa nila, nagkakaroon tayo ng idea kung paano natin magawa yung isang bagay na pinapagawa sa atin. We have the teacher's assessment. Teacher's assessment is used to determine the current level of students' achievement and accordingly to determine appropriate teaching strategies and goals for students, examine the errors and why they were made, and use their information to direct the next step in teaching error analysis. Yun nga, nagkakaroon din ng teacher's uh, assessment kasi mahalaga rin na natuturuan tayo kung paano, na, kung paano natin gagawin yung mga CBT. Applications of the fundamental components of other curriculum designs. We have the major components, of course, design or syllables. We have the intended yeah, outcomes yeah. or objectives. We have the content subject matters okay. with reference. Okay. Method strategies with intended to evaluations means. Yeah, to give some ideas, let us continuously for major components or elements of curriculum. The aims, goals, and objectives.
Oh. Curriculum aims, goals, and objectives to answer the questions, what is to be done? We have divided the three educational levels. We have the primary, we have the secondary, and the tertiary. It includes, uh, siguro yung subject-centered view of curriculum na natin sa dalaway. Yung una, subject-centered view of the curriculum nga, sabi ko kanina. Then, learner-centered view of a curriculum. Then, the two is the curriculum contents or the subject matters. We have the, what is the subject matter should be included. Siguro yung na-explain ko na kanina, yung mga dapat na kabilang lang dun sa subject matter. Number three is the curriculum experience. Instructional strategies and methods will link to curriculum experiences, the core and the heart of the curriculum. Siyempre, mahalaga na yung experience natin talaga, yun yung nag nagiging uh, excessing heart ng ating mga ginagawa. The instructional strategies and methods will put into actions the goals and views of contents in order right. to produce an outcome. Number four is the curriculum evaluation. To, to be effective, all curricula must have an element of evaluation. Curriculum evaluations refer to the formal determinations of the quality, effectiveness of values of a program, process, and product of a curriculum. Now, uh, to be con uh, as we continue, while our sample refers only to designing a lesson plan, which is many curriculum similar, the components will also be used in making syllable for teaching in higher education courses or other curriculum projects based on the curriculum models we have learned. The fundamental components include the following. Applications of the fundamental components to others' curriculum's design. All others' additional components are trimming that each designer may place. Yun nga, nagpuputol-putol kasi, kaya, pero nagkukunting yun naman siya. These additional parts may be instructional templates suggested by other curriculum experts as acquired by educational agencies like the Department of Education, Commission of the Higher Education, accrediting agencies, and the professional organizations that would serve the purposes they intended to achieve. Yun nga. Siguro mas nas nagiging maayos yung paraan ng kanilang ginagawa sa mga magita ng kanilang mga curriculum design na nagsisilbing guide para dun sa mga educators. That's all. For clarification, we are now open for questions. You may now ask. Anyway. Miss Janet, do you think curriculum change is inevitable? Yes, of course. Kasi nga, di ba, uh, yung society natin nagbabago and uh, yung technology din in, in, in progress. So therefore, di pagbabago na nangyayari na kailangan maka-adapt din yung curriculum. Therefore, may mga changes na nangyayari kaya siya ay unchanged. Yung changes. Kasi nagpo-progress eh, nagkakaroon ng development and nababago yung curriculum. Sabi nga dun sa na-discuss kanina, ay yung curriculum ay ongoing and kailangan siya mag-respond dun sa needed, kung ano yung needed ng, ng learners and to society. Thank you po. Next please. To Miss Janet again. Does curriculum change not consider the existing one? Come again? <laughs> Does curriculum change not consider the existing one? No. No. Kasi without the existing one na curriculum, hindi maka, walang basis ka, hindi ka maka, makahanap ng basis to to form a new curriculum or mag, para ma-develop yung panibagong curriculum. Kasi dun ka nga titingin eh. Kung may mga kailangan na baguhin, kung mga kailangan na i-improve, dun tayo titingin sa kung ano yung nag-exist ngayon para mas ma-improve dun sa panibago pa, ma-develop ma ng panibago pa na mas useful at mas makaka so nung issues na sa na ngayon na nag-exist na curriculum para hindi na siya mag-occur. Sa yung Okay, for Sir Maranga. Should curriculum be designed only by one person? 
Should curriculum be designed by only one person? Only? My answer is no. Kasi dun sa sinabi, why? Why no? Because kapag design ng curriculum, kailangan involved hindi lang yung mga teachers, kundi pati dapat yung mga stakeholders, including the student and administrator. It is cooperation, not individual. Thank you, Mr. Bergara. Okay, is there anyone else? If there's no one else, then that's all for the lesson two. And thank you, reporter or speaker, for giving your knowledge about the lesson one. Lesson two. In the chapter 2 is all about approaches to curriculum designing that would be discussed by Jean Leslie Medinilla and me, Rizal F. Billion. Good day, everyone. I am Jean Leslie Medinilla, together with my partner, Rizal Billion, we present to you about uh, approaches to curriculum design. In this lesson, we need to come up with the desired learning outcomes, which is to identify some familiar curriculum designs and approaches to the designs, and also the approaches, analyzed approaches in the light of how these are applied in the school settings. And you all have started familiar with the preliminaries of making a simple design through a lesson plan components. You will further enrich your knowledge by looking into how other curricularists approach in the uh, curriculum design. In this lesson, we will see how several examples of curriculum designs are used in the schools and classrooms. Next, um, the types of curriculum design models. There are many ways of looking at curriculum and design one. For our own purposes, let us focus on the most widely used examples. The first one is subject-centered design. This is a curriculum design that focuses on the content of the curriculum. The subject-centered design correspond, corresponds mostly to the textbook because textbooks are usually written base a specific subject or course. Henry Morrison and William Harris are the few curricularists who firmly believe in this design as practice. School hours are allocated to the different school subjects such as science, mathematics, language, social studies, physical education, and others. Uh, ito ay Pinapractice na din siyempre dito sa Pilipinas, which is yung nagpo-focus, ang naka-center ang curriculum na ito ay subject, which is uh, yung isang araw ay nahati sa ilang oras and yung ilang oras ay nahati sa, sa mga subject. And most of the school using this kind of structure and curriculum design aim for excellence in the specific subject discipline content. Subject-centered curriculum design has also some variation which are focused on the individual subject, specific discipline, and a combination of subjects subjects or disciplines which are a broad field or interdisciplinary. Next slide is the first variation of subject-centered design. Next slide, please. The first variation of subject center design is the subject design. What are what subjects are you teaching, or what subject are you taking? These are two simple simple questions that the teacher and the learner can easily answer. It is because they are familiar with the subject design curriculum. 
An example of a subject-centered curriculum is the spiral curriculum. The spiral curriculum are organized around the material to be taught with less emphasis on the discipline structure itself and more emphasis on the concept and ideas. The subject design is subject design curriculum is the oldest and so far most familiar 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 rather familiar design for teachers, parents, and other laymen. According to the advocates, subject design has an advantage because it is easy to deliver. Because uh, subject design, kung baga ay umaasa or umiikot lang ay sa subject and nagpo-focus sa subject. And textbooks are written and for instructional material, materials are commercially available. Teachers are familiar with the format because they were educated using also the design. The Philippine education system, the number of subjects in the elementary education is fewer than secondary level. Unlike the unlike unlike in the college na it it depends or it depends on their pursuing of uh, bachelor or degree. However, the drawback of the design is that sometimes learning is so compartmentalized. When, when we say compartmentalized, it is the division of something into section or categories. Oh, it stresses so much the content and forgets about students' natural tendencies, interests, okay. and experiences. The teacher becomes the dispenser of knowledge and the learners are the simply the empty vessel to receive the information or content from the teacher. This is a traditional approach to teaching and learning. Ito yung common na nangyayari dito sa Philippines. The second variation is the discipline design. This curriculum design model is related to the subject design. However, while a Subject design centers only on the cluster of content. Discipline design focuses on academic discipline. Discipline refers to specific knowledge learned to a method which the scholars Kampo, use to study a specific, specific content of their fields. The student in history should learn the subject matter like historians. Students in biology should learn how to how the biologists learn. Kampo, and also, kam. students in mathematics who should learn how mathematicians learn. In the same manner, teachers should teach how the scholars in the discipline will convey the, part, the particular knowledge. Ito yung, uh, kung baga, nag-focus sila. Halimbawa, sa teacher, uh, pinapriority pina yung uh, being a teacher. Uh, uh, ina-apply dito yung uh, pagiging paano ba kumikilos ang teacher. Kung baga, sa discipline or manner, naka-center. Discipline design model Tampo, of naka, curriculum oh. is often used in college, but not in the elementary or secondary levels. Because yung isip or takbo ng, uh, kung baga ay kilos ng elementary, syempre, ang isip ng, ng elementary is yung magbasa lang abakada or yung mga mababa lang na ano. Unlike sa college na uh, nakafocus na sila kung saan sila pupunta or uh, uh, naka-align sa kanilang uh, course, kumbaga. So, from the subject-centered curriculum, curriculum moves higher to a discipline when the students are more mature and are already moving towards their career path or disciplines as science, mathematics, psychology, humanities, history, and others. The third one is the correlation design. Coming from a core, correlate, correlated curriculum design links separate subject designs in order to reduce fragmentation. Subjects are related to one another and still maintain their identity. For example, English literature and social studies correlate well in the elementary level. In the two subjects, while history is being studied, 
different literary places during the historical period are also being studied. The same is true when science becomes the core, mathematics is related to it, as they are taken in chemistry, physics, and biology. Another example is Literature as the core with art, music, history, geography related to it. To use correlated design, teachers should come together and plan their lesson cooperatively. Kumbaga, ang math, di ba, lagi, lagi siyang may kaka, kakabit. Di ba, ang math, lagi na lang kakabit ang uh, language. Paano mo maiipaliwanag ang equation kung hindi ka gagamit ang language? Kumbaga, gumagamit siya to correlate and uh, explain. And the next one is road field design or interdisciplinary. Road field design or interdisciplinary is a variation of the subject center design. This, the design was made to cure the compartmentalization. Again, when we say compartmentalization, it is the division of something into sections or categories. Uh, the design was made to cure the compartmentalization of the separate subject and integrate the contents that are related to one another. That subjects such as geography, economics, politics, political science, anthropology, sociology, and history are fused into a one subject called social studies. Yung, yung mga yung kumbaga, ang daming, ang daming topic, ang daming subject, pero isang main subject lang yung uh, pinagtutuunan. Language arts will include grammar, literature, linguistics, spelling, and composition, katulad nun. And sometimes called holistic curriculum. Road Fields draw around themes and integration. Interdisciplinary design is similar to thematic design, where a specific theme is identified and all other subjects areas revolve around the theme. And we can proceed to second type. The second type is learner-centered design. Among the progressive educational psychologists, the learner is the center of the educative process. This emphasis is very strong in the elementary level. However, more concern has been placed on the secondary and even the tertiary levels. Although in high school, the subject or content has become the focus and uh, importance of the learner in the curriculum. Here are some examples of curriculum design which are learner-centered. The first one is... Child-centered design. This design is often attributed to the influence of John Dewey, Rousseau, Rousseau Pentalo, Pestaliosi, and Cobain. This curriculum design is anchored on the needs and interests of the child. The learner is not considered a passive individual, but one who engages with his or her environment. One learns by doing. Learners actively create, construct meanings, and understand, understand as viewed by the contractivists. In the child-centered design, learners interact with the teachers and the environment. Thus, there is a collaborative effort on both sides to plan lessons, select content, and do activities together. Learning is a product of the child's interaction with the environment. The second one is experience design. Experience-centered design learning. The design is similar to the child-centered design, although the focus remains to, to be the child. Experience-centered design believes that the interests and needs of the learners cannot be pre-planned. Kumbaga, hindi mo mapaplano, kumbaga, yung ano, uh, experience ng isang bata. Kasi ang experience, ma mararanasan mo na, di ba? Hindi mo mapaplano na dapat ganito ang ma-experience ng 
dapat ganito ang maranasan o kung anong mangyari. Kasi halimbawa sa plano, 'di ba pag nagpaplano, nagpaplano tayo minsan iba yung ina-expect natin. Kumbaga, halimbawa pag order tayo, nangyayari yung ano, uh, ex- uh, expectation versus reality. Kumbaga, ika nga. Because learners are made to choose the various activities that the teacher provides. Dito kumbaga ah uh, Oo, learner learner pa rin yung kumbaga mas nangingibabaw. The learners are empowered to shape their own learning from the different opportunities given by the teacher. In a school where experience-centered curriculum is provided, different learning centers are found. Times is times is flexible and learning are free and children are free to make options because activities revolve around different emphases such as touching, feeling, imagining, constructing, and relating, relating and others. The emergence of multiple intelligence theory blends well the experience-centered design curriculum. And the next one is humanistic design. The key influence of this curriculum design is Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. Maslow's theory of self-actualization explains that a person who achieves this level is accepting of self, others, and nature. It is simple, spontaneous, and natural. It is open to different experiences, possesses empathy and sympathy towards the less self-actualization. The person can achieve the state of self-actualization later in life but has to start the process while still in school. Carl Rogers, on the other hand, believed that a person can enhance self-directed learning by improving self-understanding, the basic attitude, attitude rather, to, to guide behavior. In humanistic design curriculum, the development of self is the ultimate objective of learning. It, is, it stresses the whole person and the integration of thinking, feeling, and doing. It considers the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domains to be interconnected and must be addressed in the curriculum. It stresses the development of positive self-concept and interpersonal skills. Kumbaga is, uh, umiikat dito yung uh, pagiging humanistic from the word humanistic. And dito nade-develop or kinoconsider yung cognitive, effective, and psychomotor domains na ng isang bata. And this ah, uh, I I let Rizal Villon will continue to be discuss the another types and variation. Now let's proceed to problem center design. It draws on social problems, needs, interests, and abilities of the learners. It uses a student approach, but it instructs students to look at the problem or situation and figure out a way to solve it. It is also organized to reinforce cultural traditions and also to address those community and societal needs that are currently unmet. The contents are organized in ways that allow students to clearly view problem areas. Dito po ginagamit ang past and present experiences ng learners to analyze the basic areas of living. So, based on Herbert Spencer's curriculum, ang ina-emphasize po, niya, ah, ina-emphasize po niya dito yung activities that sustain life, enhance life, aid in rearing child, maintain the individual social and political relations, and enhance leisure tasks and feelings. Next. Persistent life situations are crucial to a society's successful functioning. Next, we have core problem design. 
Ang core problem design po ay naka-center sa general education. Uh, at ang problems ay based on the common human activities. So, the central focus of core problem design are common needs, problems, concern, and concern of the learners. It is popularized by phones and bossy. So, first we have subject and third design. It focuses on the content of the curriculum. It corresponds mostly to the textbook. Most of the schools are using this kind of structure and cur curriculum design aim for excellence in the specific subject discipline content. He also, has also same variations, variations which are focused on the individual subject, specific discipline, and combination of Subject. Dito po binibigyang importance yung students and most education expert and education psychologists are in favor of this curric curriculum. So after discussing those curriculum design, may, may tanong tayo dito na how will a particular design be approached by the teacher? So i-discuss po natin ngayon yung approaches to curriculum design. So we have here child-centered approach. Child-centered approach, of course, it is the center of the educational process is the child or the learner. The curriculum is built upon the knowledge of the learner's skills, the previous learnings, and potentials. So, let's proceed to subject-centered design. Subject-centered design focuses, focuses on the content of the curriculum corresponds mostly to the textbook. Ano po, parang simil similar lang siya dun sa diniscuss ni Miss Jean Medinilla. And most of the schools using this kind of structure and cur curriculum design aim for excellence in the specific subject discipline content. It's also has also same variations which are focused on the individual subject, specific discipline, combination of subjects. Ang emphasis po ng subject-centered ay naka-focus sa acquisition, memorization, and knowledge of each specific content area. Within this curriculum structure, meron din siyang strong emphasis sa instruction, teacher to student explanation, at saka sa direct strategies. Dun sa direct strategies, in, yung direct Direct strategies include lectures, questions, and answers, as well as teacher-student discussions. So the next we have problem-centered approach. As we see full of child-centered. Here, principles of child-centered curriculum approach. So the first one is acknowledge and mental rights of the child. Make all activities on the development of the learner. Consider the uniqueness of every learner in a multicultural classroom. Consider differentiated instruction or provide a multi support learning environment for all the learners. So let's see the problem centered approach. So it's it has also its own principles. Um, primary focus is the sub-matter. The emphasis is on this and piece of information which may be detached from life. The subject matter serves as a means of identifying problems of living. Learning means accumulation of content or knowledge and teacher's role is to dispense the content. Ito po ay nakakonsist na carefully designed problems to challenge Challenge students to use yung problem-solving techniques natin, self-directed learning strategies, team participation skills, at disciplinary knowledge. So, we are all now open for clarification. You may start now. My question, My question is for Ms. Rizal Vignon. What, what increases, increases the relevance of the curriculum? 
Yung nag-i-interest ko nung kanilang relevance ay yung connection ng subject matter sa real situations. Mm. Yan lang po. Next, please. Ang question ko po sa, sa reporters, reporters or sa mga, or sa mga speaker, speaker ay, ay ano ang kahalaga o important, important ng, ng curriculum, curriculum design? design. Yan lang po. Ang importance po ng cur- curriculum design ay mas mapapalalim yung ating mga nalalaman o nagututunan at it su- supports students in gaining important core competencies such as critical and creative thinking, skillful communication, at saka demonstrating care para sa ating sarili at para sa iba. Thank you po. Thank you po. Thank you po. Okay, thank you. Is there any other clarification? So, I think none. So, thank you, reporter, for that meaningful meaningful explanation about lesson two. We appreciate that. As we continue this webinar, let the lesson 3 be discussed by Ms. Eunice Benevente and Mr. Armel Impas. Lesson 3 is all about curriculum mapping. Good day everyone. Our topic is curriculum mapping. We as a teacher, uh, we are uh, curri- uh, as we as a teacher we are a curricularist and a curriculum designer and a curriculum design is reflect in a written curriculum either as a lesson plan or a or a bigger curriculum like uh, K to 12 uh, we say th- we say we say that curriculum is well well planned so our learning outcomes is uh, define curriculum mapping as a part of curriculum designing and identify the purpose of curriculum maps and also familiarize oneself of some example of curriculum maps So we say we say that curriculum was well planned, but before that a teacher shall put a plan or design into action, he or she must need to do a curriculum map. Um this process was introduced by KD Hayes Jacob in 2004. According to ASCD org publication, KDAs is a educational constant uh, consultant and he worked with thousands of teachers in the US and internationally to develop a curriculum map. He talked with educational leadership about curriculum change that would be would better rep, uh prepare students for the 21st century on ongoing um this process was ongoing process or work in progress it also a uh, it, it is not a uh, one time initiative uh, initiative but continuing action uh, which involves the teachers and other stakeholders the other stakeholders means the teacher, um, uh, col- college, parents, schools, uh, school official, and the community as well. Uh, some curricularists will describe curriculum mapping as making a map 
to to success and this question may include what do my student learn so in curriculum mapping we as we also assess uh, we make a gu uh, guide so uh, so the we say that curriculum um, curriculum makes make uh, ano, ano ba to? Is, uh, diba sabi natin um, by curriculum mapping kumbaga ang curriculum mapping ito yung magtuturo sa atin kung ano yung dapat natin ituro at uh, uh, kung ano dapat yung ating ituro at mat at matutunan so number uh, number two what do they what do they uh, study in the first quarter what are they studying in the school throughout the year and do my co-teacher who handle the same subject cover the same content syempre magkaiba namang kung magkaiba kayo ng major uh, hindi talaga uh, malabo talaga na na magkapareho kayo ng curriculum ng ng guide or kung kung sakaling pareho naman yung major subject na tinuturuan nyo at saka uh, same year pero kung pero magkaiba pa rin si, magkaiba syempre magkakaiba pa rin naman ng estudyante talagang hindi talaga 100% na mako-cover na uh, pareho talaga yung output nyo. How do I help my student understand the, co the connection between my subject and other subject within the year or next year? In curriculum mapping, may be available to answer this question above. In uh, in curriculum mapping process, we have some example. For example, mixing a matrix or a spreadsheet. Uh, place a, a timeline that you need to cover. Uh, for example, ang cover ng 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 lesson na to ay per quarter o hindi kaya per semester. Enter the intend, intended learning outcomes, um, skills needed to be taught or achieved at the end of the teaching. So, kumbaga sa pag gumawa tayo ng, pag gumagawa tayo ng curriculum map, parang binibigyan din natin ng kota yung sarili natin kung, kung, ano, kung, kung ano lang yung dapat na maituro okay, ng, okay. ng quarter na ito. Okay, okay. Kumbaga, hindi tayo hindi tayo mag-overlap tsaka maano may eliminate natin yung yung naniniwala pa rin kasi ako dun sa mas ma it's better to ah uh, ano sabi ano mas ano kasi ako dun sa uh, quality before quantity so Number four, enter in the same matrix the content areas, subject areas to be covered. Align and name its resource available such uh, textbook, workbook, modules next to subject area. And enter the teaching learning method to be used to achieve the outcomes. Align and enter the assessment pro procedure and tools to, to the intended learning outcomes, content areas, and resources. So, dun sa mamaya, may papakita tayo na uh, example ng 
ng curriculum mapping. Kumbaga, sa curriculum mapping, nandun yung content, yung at yung yung uh, yung mga materials na dapat gamitin. Circulate the map among all involved personnel for this input. Revise and refine map based on suggestion and distribute for to all concerned. So for the first example na pinresent ni Mr. Impas, yun ay example ng component ng isang OBE, Inspired Syllable, or Outcome-Based Education. Syllabus pa na. So for the next one, for the next example, ito ay another example kung paano pa gumawa ng curriculum mapping. So for the first process, make a matrix or a spreadsheet. Ito kahit depend uh, sa paggawa niya ng matrix depende kung ano yung uh, kung ilan yung ilalagay niyo components. Next. And then next identify the degree or program outcomes. Ito ba ay para sa BE ed or BS ed. So dito ang ginawa ang example na naka-present dyan ay para sa uh, sa BE ed for college professional education course. And then the next, identify the subjects or courses under the degree. Ang mga subjects dito, child development, facilitating human learning, ito ay sa vertical uh, vertical part. Uh, child development, facilitating human learning, social dimensions, teaching profession, principles of teaching, assessment of learning, educational technology, curriculum development, developmental reading, field study, and practice, te practice teaching. Those are just examples of subjects. Depende rin sa subject na ituturo mo. Kung ano ituturo mo, yun yung ilalagay mo dun sa, sa, sa column for subjects. Ayan na yung part na ililista mo yung subjects dun sa vertical cells nga. Sa fourth part, part yung kaninang sinabi ko. So the next one, it list degree program outcomes along the horizontal cell. Use code as PO1, PO2. PO1 or PO2 means program outcome 1, program outcome 2. Doon naman ay para sa uh, outcome doon sa taas, taas ng matrix. And then for the next one, cross the subject and outcome and determine if, we, if such subject accomplishes the outcomes as either learned, performed, or given opportunity. Place the code in the corresponding cell. Ito pagtatapatan mo lang, halimbawa, yung sa subject na child development. Tapos, yung sa program outcome 1, ang na-achieve ay learned. So, ang ilalagay dun sa tapat nila ay L, or the learned outcomes. Next. And then next, fill up all the cells. Uh, continue lang yung ginagawa na lalagyan ng P, ng L, or ng O hanggang sa mapuno yung lahat ng cells. Tapos, and then the last one, after accomplishing the map, use it as a guide for all teachers teaching this, the, the course for students to complete the degree in four years. So, yun. Tapos na yung paggagawa ng uh, curriculum map. So, ang pinaka magiging output niya, example is, Ganto. Ayan yung P, yung L, yung O. Ang ibig sabihin ng L, learned outcomes. Yung P, practice the learned outcomes. And yung O, opportunity to learn and practice. Yun yung another way ng paggagawa ng curriculum map. So yan. Ano nga po ba talaga ang curriculum maps? Kanina pa tayo nagpo-curriculum map. Di pa natin alam kung anong curriculum map. Ah, 
Curriculum maps are visual time timelines na nagko-contain ng learning outcomes, yung content na ituturo mo or yung mga subjects, skills and values taught, uh, instructional time. Sa so, instructional time yung kung ano uh, kung gaano kung ano yung haba or yung range no subject na to. For example, for one quarter lang, for two quarters or hanggang final uh, for one year. Tapos yung assessment to be used sa mga assessment tools yan. Tapos, overall student movement towards the attainment of the learning outcomes. Uh, curriculum maps can also be simple or elaborate. Uh, it can also be used by an individual teacher or by a department or pwedeng yung buong school or yung buong educational system. Sila yung pwedeng gum uh, gumamit ng curriculum map. Uh, ang curriculum map ay naka- Uh, nakabase sa school calendar, of course. Siyempre, may kinalaman to sa education. So, ang basehan ng curriculum map mo, yung para sa sa time niya, ay for, ang basehan niya sa school calendar. So, next. Natingin nyo, bakit nga ba kailangan pang gumawa ng curriculum map? Ano ba yung pinakang purpose kung bakit kailangan pa ng curriculum map? Ah, uh, sinong gustong sumagot? Why do you think is there a need to make a curriculum map? Ma'am. Yes, Mr. Gergara. I think it help the curriculum to avoid overlapping, avoid also to avoid redundancy and improves instruction. Okay, another answer. Um, for me, kailangan ng curriculum map kasi para magkaroon ng boundary yung magiging gagawin nating lesson para sa, halimbawa, nakalang per semester or per, per, per kada, kada part ng ating ituturo. Halimbawa, ma-organize ma natin mga lesson na ating ituturo sa mga bata tapos magiging malilimit lang yung ating kailangang aralin para para may ituro natin yung mga lesson na kailangan natin ituro para sa mga bata. Okay. Both are correct. Ah, for the first one, uh, curriculum map provide quali quality control of what are taught in schools to maintain excellence, efficiency, and effectiveness. Uh, so, yung sabi nga kanina, pa, uh, yung sa control, uh, ang ibig sabihin ng part na to, kapag may curriculum map ka, yung mas, mas magiging maganda yung quality nung ituturo mo since organized na siya, uh, planado na kung ano talaga yung gagawin mo. So, ibig sabihin parang yung mga lessons doon, uh, evaluated na. So, yung quality nung... nung Uh, mas magiging maganda yung quality nung ituturo mo. Tapos, mamaintain yung excellence, efficiency, tapos effectiveness nung pagtuturo. So, tapos magiging mas maganda yung learning. And then, also, curriculum map is in intended, intended to improve instruction and maintain quality of education that all stakeholders need to be assured. Yan nga yung nasabi kanina ni Mr. Vergara, it improves instruction. So dito, ano, since organized na siya, syempre, mas magiging maganda yung flow ng instruction, tapos mas magiging maayos yung discussion. Tapos, since maayos siya, magiging uh, mataas din yung quality ng education, tapos magiging mas assured or marireassure mo yung mga stakeholders like yung, yung school officials, yung mismong school nyo, yung other, uh, other people na involved dun sa school even the community. And then, ito. May mga parents na, may, na nagtatanong, why is my friend's son studying decimals in Mr. Bernardo's class and my own son is not studying the same in Miss Julia's class when they are in the same grade level? Minsan may nagtatanong kung bakit nga ba iba yung, iba yung, ano, iba yung inaaral niya sa ina, ina, iba yung inaaral ng anak ko sa inaaral ng anak niya. E pareho lang naman silang 
ng grade level. Bakit nga ba ganun? So ito, gamit yung curriculum map, pwede mo siyang may paliwanag. Tapos yun yung parang magiging proof. Tapos mas magiging uh, pinakang basihan kung ano yung tinuturo mo. Uh, Siyempre, depende naman yun sa teacher. May iba-iba tayong pacing. Kaya yung curriculum map, magkakaiba din. Although, same yung, uh, same yung mga gustong ma-achieve, iba-iba yung mga tinuturo kahit magkapareho lang siya ng grade level. Yung, yung curriculum map, yung magpapatu, uh, yun yung magbibigay ng clarity sa kanila. And then the next one, bakit, uh, why do some of my students recognize the parts of speech while others are totally lost? Iyan yung mga karaniwan tinatanong, bakit sila? Bakit yung mga uh, estudyante kong iba, naiintindihan yung parts of speech, pero yung iba, hindi naman nila naiintindihan. So, syempre, part yun ang ano, ng, sa isang klase. As we all know, students are diverse. May iba-iba tayong learning, uh, learning phases. May ibang mas mabilis matuto, mas mabilis ma makaintindi. May iba na medyo uh, it takes time para mas maintindihan nila yung lesson. So, through curriculum map, mas ma-adjust mo yung, yung lesson mo, dun mo maayos yung paano, paano ko masosolusyonan to. Paano ko magagawa na habang mas may uh, may nagig may na mas nakakaintindi ng lesson ko habang yung iba naiiwan. Paano ko mababalance yun? So sa curriculum map, pwede natin yung iayos. Ah, uh, another purpose it measures specific information or pacing, alignment of the subject horizontally or vertically to the stakeholders. Uh, for, uh, i-define ko muna yung horizontal alignment tapos vertical alignment. Ano nga ba yun? Ang horizontal alignment, para sa pacing guide yan. Ang pace ay yung parang, yung bilis ng pag, pagpapalit mo ng lesson. Tapos, all teachers, kapag horizontal alignment, lahat man teacher na nagtuturo sa isa pare parehong subject, at pare-parehong grade level ay uh, susunod sa parehong timeline at mag-accomplish na sa parehong outcomes. For example, ako ay teacher sa math. Tapos, si Mr. Impas, teacher din sa math. Pero, uh, uh, at the same time, pareho kami ng year level na tinuturuan. So, sa horizontal alignment, dapat pareho yung mga subject na... Uh, pareho yung uh, subjects namin. Halimbawa, for quarter or for this semester, yung, uh, yung subjects ko, pa, dapat pareho ng subject niya for that semester as well. Tapos, dapat pareho din kami ng learning outcomes na uh, susundin. Sa vertical alignment naman, sa concept development yung pinakang focus niya. Pwede siyang hierarchy or uh, ano to? Pataas. Or spiral, from simple to complex. So, ang example ng spiral, ano, for example, sa math. Uh, kung, kung napapansin nyo, mula elementary, tinuturuan tayo ng pagpa-plus, pagmaminus, hanggang ngayon ginagamit pa rin. Parang, parang nagagamit pa rin natin yung mga lesson na yun. Uh, ang nagkakaiba lang, mas palalim siya ng palalim. So, from simple concept, magigi siyang complex habang nataas na rin, na rin yung grade level or not na taas din yung uh, quarter natin. So, ayan. Another, nabanggit din to ni Mr. Vergara, it prevents, curriculum map prevent redundancy, inconsistency, and misalignment. Sabi nga, uh, sabi nga niya kanina, para ma, ma ano ay mabawasan yung pagpapaulit-ulit kasi sa curriculum map since it's detailed mas na monitor mo yung mga subjects na ituturo so may iwasan mo yung pag-uulit-ulit ng mga lessons
Mm. Curriculum map as a work in progress. Uh, ito nabanggit na curriculum is a uh, is inevitable to change. Nabanggit yun sa first action na diniscuss ni Ms. Ebreyo sa lesson 1. So, curriculum map as a work in progress. Hindi siya, wala siyang end. Ongoing lang siya lagi, continuing. Dahil continuing ang curriculum map, it enables teachers to create and recreate curriculum. Dahil hindi siya, uh, hindi siya fixed or hindi siya hanggang dito lang, pwede mo siyang i-modify, pwede mo siyang palitan, o di kaya gumawa ka ulit ng bago. Uh, it provides good modification of curriculum, changing of standards and competencies. Ito, bakit nga ba kailangan pa ng modification ng curriculum? Diba? Uh, Siyempre, as time changes, yung needs ng students nag-iiba rin. Tapos, so, diba, ang curriculum map ay work in progress. So, yung uh, binibigyan niya ng, ng chance na mag-modify pa yung curriculum para ma-fit yung uh, ma-fit yung needs ng students at saka yung mga ma-meet yung needs dahil sa changes para ma-fill up yung mga pagbabago. Parang hindi na sa'yo. Tapos, it is based on Ted OBE Handbook 2014. Ito yung mga examples ng curriculum map. Yung first example is for basic education and uh, sample B is for college level. Uh, yung sa example ay galing siya sa hinangos sa DepEd Curriculum Guide for Science 3. Science 3 shows a, exam a, a sample of a map for quarter 1 and 2. And a, col a column for code was not included. Sabi na hindi na siya. Okay, yeah. There are more. Okay, uh, ito yung inaano ko kanina na example natin. Uh, ito naman yung sa elementary elementary in grade 3 in a science subject. So, making a curriculum map, same din to pagka nag-grab tayo ng mga functions. Uh, we locate the uh, we use the point to locate the um, <clears throat> the sometimes kinukuha natin yung center or hindi kaya reduce um so this is example A na to uh, ito ay nakabase sa per quarter. So, ito yung para sa ang pinakang uh, ikot nung sa curriculum map nito ay sa naka, ang pinaka basis na sa per quarters sa time. Ito, sa example na to, nakalagay na yung content, content standards, performance standards, learning competencies, and learning materials. Uh, ang mga lesson dito ay for grade 3, for first quarter grading period. Uh, Subjects, properties, uh, and under niya ay characteristics of solid and gases. gases. So, ito nakalagay dito sa, ma, sa itong klase ng curriculum map na ito, uh, detailed siya. So, nakalagay na yung content, yung, yung mga standards, content standards, yung performance standards, learning competency, tas yung mga learning materials na gagamitin sa pagtuturo. Kadugtong lang siya nung una. Ayan. O. Oh. Ito naman sa next example. Science curriculum map showing the sequence of domain for for the year per quarter. Ang ano naman ang curriculum map na to ay per quarter. Habang ay from grade 3 hanggang grade 10. And this one, yung kanina, na napakita ko dun sa, pra, sa curriculum map, mapping process, ito yung example naman for curriculum map for bachelor, bachelor of Elementary Education, Professional Education Courses. Ang 
pinakang nakalagay lang sa ang uh, pinakang nakalagay sa curriculum map data yung pro, program outcomes sa kaya mga mga sample subjects. So, ito yung ibig sabihin ng, ng pro, uh, for program outcome number one, Applied Basic and Higher 21st Century Skills. Program outcome number two or PO2, Acquired Deep Understanding of the Learning Process. Uh, PO3, Comprehended Knowledge of the Content They Will Teach. PO4, Applied Teaching Process Skills. Curriculum designing, materials development, educational assessment, teaching approaches. PO5 facilit uh, facilitated learning of different types of learners in diverse learning environments. PO6 directed experiences in the field and classroom. Observation teaching assistance and practice practice teaching. So, for program outcome number seven, demonstrated professional and ethical standards of the profession. Program outcome number eight, demonstrated creative and inno innovative thinking and practice of alternative teaching approaches. Yun yung, yung ibig sabihin, yun yung mga program outcomes na nakalagay dito sa uh, curriculum map na to. Okay. Miss, Miss Benavente, I just have some clarification. Yes, po. Can you elaborate some call A1? Okay. Ayan. Ah, so for, for uh, this example, uh, kung pansin nyo, paulit-ulit lang yung mga subjects. Kahit patasan ng patas yung grade, grade level. Ano yun? Ibig sabihin ba nun? Paulit-ulit lang yung matututunan nila from grade 3 to grade 10. Of course, hindi. Uh, sa, sa curriculum map na to, example to nung sa parang sa spiral curriculum. So, from grade 3, yung matter, yung living things and their environment, yung mga concepts ng mga subjects na nakakuntay sa grade 3 ay basic pa lang. Yung mga pinakasimple concepts. Habang natas yung grade level, papalipat ka ng papalipat, Pansin nyo, pare-pareho pa rin yung mga subjects na nakalagay. Pero yan, pataas ng pataas na rin yung uh, complexity nung, sa, uh, nung subject. Parang palaling na rin ang palaling yung uh, discussion dyan. Yun lang yung ibig sabihin ng curriculum map na to. Uh, example siya for a spiral curriculum. Na from simple, com simple uh, concept from I2, Complex concept from grade uh, grade 3 to grade 10. Yun yung pinakang ibig sabihin niya. Thank you, Miss. Is there any other clarification? Uh, may tanong lang ako kay Sir Impas. How does the curriculum help the teacher? Uh, mas pinadadali kasi pag may... Pag may curriculum map ka kasi, mas pinadadali niya yung, 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 yung trabaho mo. Kasi kung ia, pag nag-a-assist nag tayo, syempre, ini, iniyano rin natin yung mga, uh, mga subject matter natin. Ngayon, kung wala kang, wala kang guide, ma, mahirap, mahirap ma anong... Uh, Mahirap may turo ang isang subject kung wala kang uh, sinusundan na, na na guide. Uh, Is that all, Mr. Impas? Uh, okay. Is there anyone else to ask some question? If not, no one. So, thank you, Speaker, Ms. Benavent and Mr. Impas for that. For the knowledge you have shared. As part of this closing remark, let Ms. Jean Leslie Medinilla lead the prayer.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of our time together, we thank you for what has been accomplished here today. May the matters discussed serve as a catalyst to move us forward and cause us to advance and see growth in all areas of our lives. Amen.